Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday, March the 14th, 2024. That means only one thing, bro. That means it is time for some Thursday thrashing with Vince Russo. I am Vince Russo, former head writer, WWE, WCW, TNA. Yes, former WCW world champion. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Dave Meltzer. And we're here today, man, to get some truths out on the table. Because a lot of people in the wrestling business, man, are afraid of telling truths, bro. They're afraid of ruffling feathers, bro, because then they won't get a job in the industry. If we say something negative about the WWE or AEW, they will never hire us. And then I can't get that one last run in. You know what I say, bro? I say screw all that. Because the most important thing, bro, is being true to yourself and being honest and being who you are. All that other political BS, screw that. So today, man, you're going to get Vince Russo. Like my subscribers get Vince Russo every single day on Russo'sBrand.com. Patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. And if you've never been a subscriber of our Patreon, you can go there right now and get a free week of the brand and you can sample us. Just go to Patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. Claim that free week of the brand. No long time obligation. We hope that you sample us. We hope that you like us. We hope that you sign up. If you are watching this on YouTube, bro, I'm getting close to the 50,000 subscriber mark, man. Push me over to 50,000, man. If you like this video, then subscribe to the channel, like it, leave a comment, ring bells, whatever the frig you got to do, bro, to put the channel over. Because if you want me to do more shows like this, bro, you got to like the YouTube channel, bro. Also, let me set the guidelines for this little chat, bro. This is a live chat. I am coming to you live. If you want to be part of this discussion, bro, you can ask me a question. You can have a comment, and I will put it right up on the screen. But you got to do it through a donation or through a super sticker on YouTube. When I see you donate, when I see you throw a super sticker up there, I will make you part of the conversation, just like my friend here, CPB Station. Happy Thursday, Brother Vince. Real people are very rare nowadays. Thank you for being real and genuine. Brand for life, bro. Thank you very much, CP. Bro, That that listen, that's all that matters to me, bro. Being true to myself, bro. You know what matters to me? My family being proud of me. That no matter what, bro, my dad was blackballed from wrestling because he didn't kiss anybody's ass. You know what, bro? That makes me proud. That makes me freaking proud. Because New York is don't kiss ass, bro. New York is tell it like it is. And this is what I want to talk about today. And let me make one thing perfectly clear, bro. I am not speaking for the Marks. Bro, you can go back to any interview I said 30 years ago. Any interview I conducted 30 years ago, I said, as long as wrestling is in the title, as long as wrestling is on the marquee, the marks are going to watch. Yes, they will bitch and complain about it. And guess what, bro? They'll be back to watch the following week. I remember, bro, when I wrote and produced the highest segment in the history of the WWE, uh, a rock, this is your life. And, And of course, the great rock and the great Mick Foley had a lot to do with that, without a shadow of a doubt. And even Erpel, Erpel played a big part of that. I remembered vividly when that show came out, 
your boy Dave Meltzer ripped that show to pieces and made the statement, I will never watch the I will never watch Raw again. Made the statement, and here we are, bro, 25 years later with Mark Meltzer still watching Raw every week. My point is this. The Marks ain't going nowhere, bro. Wrestling is their life. They eat, they sleep, they piss, they drink, they poop. Wrestling. That is what they do. So I am here, bro, to talk for the casual wrestling fans. I am here to talk for the casual television viewers, people that, you know, will will watch wrestling when it's good. They don't go on social media and talk about wrestling 24-7. I'm talking about normal people, bro. I represent the normal people, the millions and millions and millions of ex-wrestling fans that the business has somehow lost, bro. That's what I represent. So let me make that perfectly clear. The Marks will watch anything, bro. It doesn't matter. That's what they do, bro. That that is their existence to write and mark out about wrestling. That's it. So I'm here to talk about the normal people, bro, like you and me. Let's see. Kerry Abdullah Jr. Thank you very much, my friend, for the super sticker. Very, very much appreciated. Guys, that's all you got to do to get up on the screen. Super sticker or a donation. Bro, there was a great movie, man. I, I, I am a baseball mark. I got, I, got, I, got no, I got no problem admitting that. The only difference is, bro, uh, baseball is actually real while professional wrestling is not. So I am a great baseball fan. And there was a movie a couple of years ago with Tom Hanks called League of Their Own. And Tom Hanks was manager of a all-female baseball team. And there is a scene in that movie where one of the women on the team starts crying in the dugout. Tom Hanks, as the manager, sees this and goes absolutely ballistic. And he cuts one of the famous movie lines, movie quotes in history. There is no crying in baseball. Now, bro, keep in mind, this was an all-woman's team. And the manager, Hanks, very upset, very upset that one of the women is crying in the dugout. Russell Campbell, thank you very much, bro, for the super sticker. Well, bro, let's fast forward to 2024. Let's fast forward to professional wrestling. Now, I'm talking about as a casual fan. Growing up on wrestling, bro, the 70s, the 80s, up until at least 2000, uh, the last two decades, forget about it. Up until 2000, wrestling, people would refer to wrestling as a male soap opera. And we had a picture of, in our mind, when you said professional wrestling, we, we uh, immediately, in our mind, we saw what a professional wrestler looked like. Because we learned in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, 2000. And if you knew, bro, the real life of professional wrestlers, I'm talking about up until 2000. If you knew the hard life that these dudes lived, bro. And you have no idea. You marks have no idea. You know, on the road, bro, over 300 days out of the year, in the tra- in, uh, in a car, on a plane, traveling all over the world, eating like shit, getting hurt every night, performing hurt, getting on a plane hurt, driving hurt, driving five hours to the next town. You have no idea what this job entailed, bro. Leave, leaving your family, leaving your loved ones, the sacrifices that had to be made. But bro, when you look back from 1970 to 2000, you're talking about real men. 
real men, bro, who were able to endure this type of lifestyle. You're talking about, bro, Scott Hall. You're talking about Kurt Henning. You're, you're, you're talking about Rick Rude. You're talking about Hulk Hogan. You're talking about Bruno San Martino. You're talking about Andre the Giant. You're talking about Warrior. You're talking about real men. Bro, Nick Bockwinkle. Vern Gagne. Bro, Roddy Piper. Bro, we're talking about real men and real people. Lux in Tenebris. Remember when Greg Valentine cried? Me neither. Talk about men's men, bro. Greg Valentine, Jake the Snake Roberts, bro. These were men's men, bro. The Stinger. These were men's men. Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes. These were men's men, bro. And 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 casual wrestling fans, man, you would watch professional wrestling and you would want to be that guy. You would want to be the macho man, Randy Savage, bro. You'd want to be that guy. The, the, the testosterone, bro. The, 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 the physique, bro. The attitude, bro. The edge, bro. The chip on the shoulder. The confidence, bro. You wanted to be these freaking people. You emulated. These were men's men, bro. Kurt Angle, a man's man. These were men's men. Then all of a sudden, bro, 2000 comes along. 2010 comes along. 2020 comes along, bro. And now somewhere along the line, bro, anybody can become a professional wrestler. Anybody, bro. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter whether you have a physique or you don't have a physique. It doesn't matter whether or not you weigh less than 150 pounds. It doesn't matter whether you're five foot two or five foot three. Okay. Wrestling is the only, only form of sports that anybody can be a wrestler now. Anybody. Bro, you know what they would have done? You know what Big John Stud? And King Kong Bundy would have done if a, if a guy five foot nothing, 150 pounds, walked into a locker room, bro, and, and started lacing up his boots. Do you know what a guy like John Studd and King Kong Bundy would have done, bro? Bro, they would have picked the guy up, put him in the locker, and locked him in the locker. That's what they would have done. You know why, bro? Because those people did not belong. You don't belong in our business. You don't belong in our locker room. Because the number one rule of thumb is you got to be a man, bro. No boys. No boys in this locker room, bro. You got to be a man. The Out of Pocket Variety Show, thank you, my friend. You made sure Austin Rock, et cetera, weren't white meat faces. They were tweeners. How do you book the white uh, meat baby face today if Cody's writing promos makes him look weak, corny? Is it just the crying? Great point, uh, uh, out of pocket. We're going to get to that. Bro, can you imagine Johnny Gargano? Bro, picture this. Johnny Gargano walking into the locker room the night of WrestleMania 1. Can you imagine, bro, you, you, got, you, you got Bob Orton in there. You got Paul Orndorff in there. You got Hulk Hogan in there. You got Piper in there. You got Mr. T in there. You got the junkyard dog in there. Can you imagine Johnny Gargano walking into that locker room and getting ready to lace up his boots? Can you imagine? That's an insult, bro. That is an insult. But somewhere along the line, bro, anybody can be a professional wrestler now. Anybody, bro. So with that... We are really seeing a lack of men, a lack of real men. We're seeing a lack of masculinity, and that's what wrestlers are supposed to be. Bro, this ain't ballet. This ain't circus soleil, bro. This ain't live action video games, bro. We are supposed to believe that th this is a physical fight. 
that this is a physical contest. That's what we're supposed to believe. So the fact of the matter is that we're supposed to believe that this is a real fight. Well, bro, if that's what we're supposed to believe, there can't be any guys that weigh 150 pounds in this in, in, in this business that are going to get in the ring against somebody that weighs 220 pounds. Because the guy that weighs 150 pounds, bro, is going to get his freaking ass kicked. So it's not believable. Ty Saltis, thank you very much. It's the generation now, not the wrestling. Yeah, Ty, I'm not going to argue with that. It is the generation. The generation is Mamby Pamby. Okay, bro, th- th- there's, a, there's a phrase we always used to use as kids. Sissy Marys. They're sissy Marys. I'll give you another one, bro. Girly men. Girly men. That's what I am seeing every single time I put on a wrestling show. The Gunthers, bro. The Bronson Reeds, bro, these guys are few and far between. Instead, bro, we got these dudes between 150 to 180 pounds that look like freaking taxi cab drivers, bro. That's what we got. But, bro, that's not the worst of it. Because, yeah, bro, now we got the Sissy Marys. uh, Now we got the girly men. Now we got the wimps. But that's not the worst at it. Here, CPB Station, Andre took bigger dumps than these guys. I'm not going to disagree with you, bro. If you took an Andre dump and, and you took Johnny Gargano and you put them on one of those scales, bro, I bet you it would pretty much be even out. I bet you that that scale would pretty much be even, bro. So, so thank you for that analogy. Lex in Tenebris, wrestling once influenced a generation. Not now. Yeah, bro, when the WWE, bro, the catchphrase used to be the WWE, what the world is watching. And, bro, that was accurate. That was true. What the WWE today is, the WWE, what the marks are watching. Because they are the only ones watching it, bro. And you've gotten a spike recently because you've had The Rock on the show. And The Rock is a bona fide star, bro. In and out of wrestling doesn't matter. The dude's a movie star. So so you've got some of the casual people popping back in to see what The Rock's going to do and what The Rock's going to say. But the reality of the situation is this is no longer what the world is watching. This is what the marks were watching. Let me continue. So, bro, you got these sissy Marys, you got these these wannabes, bro. You got these girly men who think they're freaking wrestlers. Now, bro, that's not enough. That's not enough. Now we got to take it to the next level. Now these men, men, these men, bro, hold on. Chip, thank you. Huge fan. Drives me crazy when people downplay your contributions to the business. Without you, I believe WCW would have won the war. Thanks, Vince. Thank you very, very much, Chip. I appreciate that. It gets worse, bro, because now we got these girly men. We got these sissy Marys. We got these wussies, bro. Now we've got grown ass men, bro. Crying in the ring. Yes, bro, you heard that correctly. Crying, crying in a wrestling ring, bro. Bro, could you imagine if David Schultz, bro, if you don't know who David Schultz is, look up, look up uh, David Schultz. Can you, uh, can you imagine Stan Hansen, bro? If if somebody on the card starts crying in the ring like a sissy Mary, can you imagine Stan Hansen? So now, bro, these these dudes are literally crying in the ring. Seth Rollins has cried in the ring, bro, because he he well, uh, I'm injured. I my back. I don't know if I can wrestle again. The doctors say this. Oh, bro, man, the frig up, bro. Man, the frig up, bro. 
Kurt Schilling, bro, the bloody sock, bro. Did he cry to anybody? Man up. And then CM Punk. You got CM Punk crying in a ring, bro. CM Punk. The Out of Pocket Variety Show. Thank you, my friend. And fan of so Vince, a lot of today's talent were by HKK, who did play ball. <laughs> All right. I'll give you that out. That that's that that's a uh, that's an anomaly, bro. That's an anomaly. But bro, the worst, the worst. There's a reason why Rock label the people Cody's crybabies. There's a reason why. Why, bro? You got Cody's crybabies because Cody is a crybaby, bro. I have never ever, bro, listen, man. You, you cry once in a wrestling ring because, you know, I don't know, bro. Maybe it's Shawn Michaels and the boyhood dream, and he finally wins that WWE. Okay, bro, th- there are exceptions to the rule. But this freaking Cody Rhodes cannot get through a promo without crying, bro. He cannot deliver a promo without crying. Now, now the reality of the situation is, bro, all, 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 all kidding aside, bro, the guy that definitely needs therapy. Like, there's no question about that. If you are on the verge of crying every time you open up your mouth, bro, you need therapy. And listen, man, what, whatever his Cody, uh, Cody's upbringing was, whatever his relationship was with Dusty, whatever, bro, Okay, I I understand that. I understand that, bro. But this is a television show. And you are supposed to be a strong, virile wrestler. Now, let me make one thing perfectly clear, bro. There is nothing wrong with men crying. There is nothing wrong with men showing emotion. Bro, I cry over movies. Okay, my wife's constantly sitting there making fun of me. I get choked. I get very emotional bro. But bro, this is a job. You are a character. This is not real. Get through a freaking promo, bro, without crying. This is a television show. And I want to try to break down, bro, exactly what is he crying over? Because this week, he broke down when he talked about handing his mother the WWE title. I might not be able to hand it to my dad, but I could hand it to my mother. And he started crying, Cody, it's a freaking prop, bro. It is a prop. The WWE title is a prop on a television show. Nobody in the history has won or lost that title based on a real fight nobody bro a writer determines whether or not you're going to win that title so you are getting choked up over a promo where i am going to hand a wrestling prop that i beat nobody to get and i'm gonna hand it to my mother really bro Yeah, yeah. somebody in the chat said, yeah, bro, it goes back to that dude. It's still real to me, damn it. Bro, the only problem is it's not real, Cody. It is not real. And, bro, here's another thing. This entire angle, finishing my story, it revolves around the great Dusty Rhodes. Bro, Dusty, Dusty is one of the top five guys in the history of the wrestling business, bro, that received more accolades than anybody. Anybody, bro. Top five, bro. Dusty is right up there with the accolades, bro, and the attention and the applause and the love that was extended to this guy. Now, when Cody talks about, I got to finish the story, Bro, Dusty was never a WWWF guy, ever, ever, bro. When Vince Sr. would bring Dusty in, bro, he was a special attraction. 
Dusty was the man in Florida and Georgia, and that's where he made a name for himself. He was never a WWF guy. And then years later, bro, polka dot Dusty, bro, he was never in the mix to be, he was an attraction, bro. To see Dusty dance and Dusty perform and the flip, flop, and fly and the elbow. He was an attraction, bro. He didn't need a belt. He didn't need a championship belt. He was never in a title picture. So what are we talking about here, bro? What what are we talking about here? You, you, you're going to sit there and tell me your dad got shortchanged? Really, bro? Holy shit, I wish I had his career and I was shortchanged like that. The guy had a phenomenal career, was a legend. Everybody knows who Dusty Rhodes is. But for some reason, bro, he was he was shortchanged out of winning the WWE title? No, you know what? The Here's the problem, Cody. This ain't your dad's story, bro. This is your story. Okay, and again, man, I don't know about your childhood. I don't know if you feel you have something to prove. I don't know, bro, if you didn't get the level of attention you thought you should have got. I am not a psychologist, bro. So I don't I don't know what your deal is. But this has nothing to do about Dusty getting screwed in the WWE. Absolutely nothing, bro. Zero. As a matter of fact, when he passed away, who was he working for? He was still employed by the WWE for crying out loud. CPB station. Finally, someone calls it out. Dusty was an NWA guy. So stop it, bro. The story's bullshit. It's your story, bro. Because to you, this freaking title is real. It is freaking real, bro. All, all the time. Maybe, maybe there wasn't enough attention. I know Dusty was on the road a lot, bro. I understand that. I get that, bro. But this isn't about him. It is about you. And my point is, I don't care if it's Cody. I don't care if it's Punk. I don't care if it's if it's Rollins. I don't want to see wrestlers cry in a wrestling ring, bro. If I, if I want to see people cry, I'll watch soap operas, bro. I'll watch One Life to Live if I want to see a, a people cry, bro. Thomas, thank you very much. If WWE asked you to come write for them, would you be interested in writing for them? Cheers. Thomas, the only way I would ever write for them is right from this seat. Never would I go on the road. Never would I be a part of the business. Those days are long, long gone. I am here, bro, to talk for, for the normal fans, the fans who no longer watch wrestling, bro, we did not become wrestling fans because guys were crying in the ring over a fake prop. That's sissy Mary, bro. That's marshmallow, bro. That's that's twinky, bro. That's soft, bro. We don't want soft in freaking wrestling. And that's why we're not watching. And you know what Cody's doing, bro? The more and more and more this guy cries, as a baby face, bro, he's showing a weakness. He's showing a weakness. And, and bro, it's going to get to the point, somebody kick this crybaby's ass. Like, seriously, bro, somebody kick this crybaby's ass and put him out of his misery. That's what it's going to come to. I, I, I just, just before I came in on here, bro, I got a tweet. And somebody tweeted out to me that, their father happened to be in a room when Cody was cutting his promo and Cody was crying. And, and it, the, the, the father turned to the son and said, when is, the, when is the rock going to kick this guy's ass? Exactly, bro. We don't want cry babies in wrestling, Cody. I swear to God, I think, bro, Cody, maybe you're on the wrong show. Maybe you need to be on The Bachelor. I know there's a lot of crying on The Bachelor. I've seen grown men cry on The Bachelor. Maybe that's the show you need to be on. But, bro, there is no crying in professional wrestling. 
I said it, bro. You don't like it. I really don't give two shits. Bro, like this channel. Subscribe to this channel. Get your free week of the brand right now, bro. Go to patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC.